Well, good morning, students. Welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyanamurthy Vijayapai for the students of Standard 8. Nice to see you in today's English grammar lecture for semester 1. Today's lecture, we will be introducing ourselves to the text that we are going to follow for the academic year 2021-22. It is a similar text that we have used in class 7, Great Fun with Grammar from Macmillan Education Publication. Before we look into the first chapter and comments, which is a similar one that you had in standard 7th, that is articles, let us go through the index, the content given to us in our text. Have your text in your hand, open to the contents page, we will quickly refer to the things given to us. The first chapter as you can see is articles with uh, <coughs> information mentioned over there, common errors articles. So having learnt articles despite of that, we happen to make some errors or students happen to make errors while making use of articles. Therefore, common errors is the title given to you below the name of the chapter that is articles because that will be a part of your learning. Followed by the next chapter that is collective nouns and abstract nouns. So collective and abstract noun is not a new concept for you. You learned this in the lower grades and the lower standards as well. Right from standard 3rd, 4th, 5th you must have learned this. So it's a revision chapter given to you. Followed by the third one is subject verb agreement, a very important one. Again it has got the sub topic given to you over there, common errors which one should not make. When we read the chapter we will come across this section as well. Fourth one is another common topic, adjectives followed by fifth one degrees of comparison which is connected to adjectives. We have adverbs, we have kinds of sentences, asking and answering questions, question tags, once again it's a revision chapter, wherever you find the word revision given the bracket it means it's a revision chapter for you to recapitulate what you learned in the earlier class. It also has a section common errors, question tags, so that you may not make mistakes. The 10th chapter is relative pronouns, 11th is tenses. So up to chapter number 11 will be our first semester. In the first semester we will be looking up to the 11th chapter till tenses. <coughs> From the 12th chapter onwards we will be commencing our second sem, preposition and prepositional phrases. It's also a revision chapter containing the topic about common errors. 13th chapter is conjunction, another common topic. But the 14th one, as you see on the next page, is model auxiliaries. Well, you may not have learned about this in the earlier class. So we learn about model auxiliaries as a new concept in class 8. 15th one is also the same that you learned infinitives. 16th is combination of two chapters, participants and gerund, which you learned in the earlier class as separate chapters. 17th one is if conditional clauses, which also contains the topic about common errors. 18th is yet another common and a very important topic that you will be learning not only in this class, you learned in the earlier class and you will keep learning for the other higher classes as well. Active and passive voice. And the 19th is reported speech or the indirect speech. So all, are, all these are the chapters that we are going to learn in class 8 this year. Well, without further ado, have a look at page number 1 where you have the name of the title given to you, articles. Well, when you hear the word articles, it doesn't sound new to you, isn't it? Because you learned about this in the lower grade. Lower grade means right from class 1 you have been learning articles. What did you learn in that class? You learned in that class that how to use articles and you introduce yourself to articles. The three magical words, the one letter, two letter, three letter, is it? Is A is a one letter word, and is a two letter word, and the PH is a three letter word. So these three magical words help us to frame proper sentences. They play a vital, significant role in the construction of sentences. They are very important in a sentence. What are they? When this question comes to our mind, we need to answer this question. For that, we have the UNO section given to us. So let's go through the UNO section which will help us to recapitulate what you learned in class 7 and then you will continue with the let's learn section 
to understand the new things that we need to acknowledge. Well, in the earlier class, you learned about the use of the article a and an and the, isn't it? Where do you apply? You apply the article a and an in the following way. When you want to indicate or show a countable noun, beginning with a consonant letter or a consonant sound, a singular countable noun, we make use of the article a, isn't it? But when you want to express, when you want to use a singular countable noun beginning with a vowel or a vowel sound, usually, isn't it? We make use of the article. But when you want to show or point out to something in particular, we leave aside a and an and we make use of the article. This is the general understanding that you have acquired in the lower grade standard 1 to 7. Well, last year also you learned about the uses of articles. So this year we have got some more uses of article in a more refined manner. So let us see. Have a look at the text on page 1 in the UNO section. The determiners, see the word determiners. You had an entire chapter about determiners in class 7. The determiners A, AN and THE are called articles. That's the simplest definition if asked to you what are articles. If someone asks what are articles, you can say the determiners A AN and THE are called articles. Now what are determiners, isn't it? You should recapture it. For that, uh, have a look at your screen, the image being displayed to you. Determiners can be classified in the following categories. So you learned about determiners in the last class as you see in the image being shown to you. This is just a picture taken from the last uh, year's text. Articles as the first name suggests, A and N, the list of determiners. Bring me a glass of water. So you are using the article A over here. So A is a determiner. One of the determiners. So article is a determiner. You have other determiners as shown to you over here, demonstratives, this, that, these, those, another, other and the example sentence given to you, that book is very good. Distributives, words which show distribution, each, every, either, neither, every man in the room looked at the clock. So the word every is used as a distributive over here but distributive is a determiner. Similarly, demonstratives are determiners. In the same manner, article is also a Well, have a quick look at quantifiers showing the quantity of something. Words like all, both, most, some, any, no, few, fewer, much, more, less, least, a little, a lot of, little and a little are all examples of quantifiers showing quantity of something. Quantifiers is a kind of determiner. So, altogether four determiners of which article is one of the determiners. Therefore, we can rightfully say that determiners, words like a and n, the are called articles. The next image that you see is intensifiers, words like what with an exclamation mark, such expressing a kind of exclamation and used in a sentence such arrogance, multipliers, words which you can really use to show uh, <coughs> Multiplying things, double, twice, three times and so on. Ram is twice as tall as Raj. Showing a calculation. Fractions, half, one third, again a mathematical unit. He finished it in half the time. Possessives, showing belongingness. Words like my, your, his, her, its, our, your and their. You have my shirt. His dog is sick are two examples of possessives showing belongingness. Numbers, that is cardinal and ordinal numbers are also determiners, just like article is a determiner. Words like 1, 2, 20 are cardinal numbers. Words like first, last are examples of ordinal numbers. This was my first dance recital. He has two cars. So you see the first one is having a ordinal use or usage, whereas the second sentence has the cardinal usage. Both are determiners. Finally, interrogatives, words which ask questions are also called determiners. So this was the list of determiners that you learned in class 7. And it was a quick recapitulation for you to make you understand that article is also one of the determiners that you learned earlier. Well, 
Coming back to the Uno section, the determiner A and N the are called articles. These determiners can be classified, can be put into two different groups known as indefinite articles and definite articles. The two words A and N are known as indefinite articles, whereas the word the is called the definite articles. Well, you learned about this in the earlier class as well. To give you a better understanding of this, let me show you another image giving you an idea about determiners and the definite and indefinite articles. Have a look at your screen. Kinds of determiners, the image being shown to you. As a chart over here, a diagram over here, you just read about determiners from class 7 text. This is an additional image that will give you a very quick imagination or a quick understanding about determiners. Like you can see the branches being drawn over in the, in the diagram. Articles right on the top over there, A and N the distributives, either, neither, each, every, quantifiers, some, any, much, many, several. Interrogatives, what, which, and whose, possessives, my, our, yours, his, and her, and demonstrative, this, that, his, and his. So, this diagram will enable you to understand determiners at a glance. You can see determiners fall into the following categories, and the names have been given to you with the relevant examples. Let me quickly take you through this. Articles, example, I kept an apple and a pear in the basket on the table. So, you see. The indefinite and the definite articles, both of these, A and N, the, all three of these have been used in a single sentence. Demonstratives, to point out something, this room was painted recently, possesses, my grandparents live in Cochin. <coughs> Distributives, each girl in my class is fond of reading. Number, expression or quantifiers, many cars are parked here. And interrogatives, which ask a question, which fan has to be repaired? Well, after this, you can see the image giving you information about the article or classification of the articles A, AND and THE can be classified into two groups. A and AND are indefinite articles. Now, why are they called so? They are called so because they do not indicate any particular person, thing or place. Such articles are used only with singular countable nouns denoting one. So something that you want to show as one singular thing, one singular countable noun, we make use of the article A or AND. And how to use it? We learned in the earlier class. And here an example is also given to you. A dog is barking, an apple fell from the tree. So you can very well see in the first sentence A is used, in the second sentence AND is used. Now why is A used over here? Because A followed by the word dog, which begins with a consonant letter and a consonant sound. Whereas in the second sentence, an is used. Why? Because the following word, after the word an, the word is apple. Apple is a word beginning with a vowel letter, a vowel sound. Therefore, we very well understood in the earlier class also that when a following word is or a word beginning with a consonant letter or consonant sound is preceded with the article a, whereas a word beginning with a vowel sound or a vowel letter is preceded with the article and to show a singular countable noun. Well, the is the definite article. It is called so because it points to a particular person, thing or place. It can be used both with singular and plural nouns and even with uncountable nouns. Well, the Differentiation has been given to you as a chart over here. A and N are indefinite articles. They generalize a noun. A and N are used with singular nouns. They are considered to be the abbreviated form of one. So when you want, whenever you want to show something one and you don't want to use the word one, isn't it singular? I want one pencil. You say I want a pencil. So A is the abbreviated form of I hope you understand this concept. A and AND are generally used with countable nouns. They are not used with uncountable nouns. Whereas, on the other side, definite articles, to summarize that, the is the definite articles, unlike A and AND. It is 
it particularizes a noun whereas an and generalizes a noun the is used with both singular and plural nouns unlike an and an and was used only with singular countable nouns whereas the is used with both singular and plural nouns the is considered to be the abbreviated form of these that those and this just like we had a is the abbreviated the short form of one similarly it is considered the article the is considered to be the abbreviated form of these that those and this the last point the can be used with countable and uncountable both of them can be used well let us now look into the let's learn section given to us in our text use of the indefinite article before we go into the details of this let us take an overview of what do we have to learn in the entire chapter in the entire chapter you will be learning about the use of the indefinite articles you will be learning about where not to use the indefinite articles you will be using uh, learning about the use of the definite article and similarly the omission of the definite article so all together four basic parts we have to learn in this chapter in the let's learn section so without further ado let's look into our text on page 1 given to us use of the indefinite article as a general rule a or an is used in the following manners so you can see the bulleted points given to you all together you got eight bulleted points for the use of the indefinite article a and an as a general rule let's read one at a time what these rules are and how they are utilized so we have an extensive learning about the usage of article compared to the earlier class that is 5th 6th and 7th so as a general rule a or an is used the first point the first rule before a singular noun which is countable when it is mentioned for the first time and represents no particular person or thing so you see an elaborated definition has been given to you an elaborated rule has been given try to understand this before a singular noun which is countable so two things it should be a singular noun one it should be a countable noun two and further adding to that we have it is mentioned for the first time it means that the name of that thing or the noun is being mentioned for the first time in a sentence it is not a repetition in the sentence so make a careful note about this when it is mentioned when it is used when it is discussed or that particular name is utilized in a sentence for the very first time and represents no particular person or thing you are not talking about any particular particular person you are generalizing it that is where you use the article a in order to a or and to show this example has been given to you a cow is an animal a cat can catch a mouse a house has a roof a man can laugh so all these four examples that you see is indicating or are indicating something that is general like we are not talking about any particular man cow house animal roof mouse no we are just talking in general about these nouns that is cow animal cat mouse house roof and man we are generalizing it we are talking about one singular countable noun in the general sense not in a particular sense so what do we mean over here when i say a cow is an animal do i do i mean to say the cow that i am looking at right now say a cow is standing in front of me and i am looking at that cow and saying a cow is a is an animal so am i talking about just that one cow that i see no i am talking in general about any cow that you and i can see is a cow so a cow is an animal a generalized statement so when you use a generalized statement containing a countable noun mentioned for the first time so you see the name of the word cow or animal is used for the very first time in a sentence it is not getting repeated anywhere but yes if it is repeated then we make use of the definite article well we learn about this when we come to the definite article the second rule before a singular countable noun which represents a class of thing see this is just a little different from the first rule before a singular countable noun 
So one thing is sure that it has a common element that is singular countable noun, just like the first rule we learned. It should be a singular countable noun where a and an can be used. So a cow has horns. Now what am I talking over here? Am I talking about just one cow, one single cow? No. I am talking about the entire family of cows or the entire community of cows. In general, when I am talking about a singular countable noun cow, the bracket is clearly mentioned, all cows have horns. So, we make use of the sentence with the indefinite article A. A cow has horns. We don't mean to say that just one single cow has horns and the rest of the cows don't have horns. No, we don't mean to say that. We mean to say a cow has horns. It means the entire community or all cows have horns in general. Similarly, the sentence an elephant has a trunk. So what are we trying to indicate over here? What are we trying to express in our sentence? That in general, all elephants that you and I see have trunk by default, isn't it? So an elephant has a trunk is used or uses the indefinite art article an in order to show, in order to express that all elephants have trunk as a general sense or represent a class of thing. The entire class, the entire group of elephants have trunk. Well, the next usage of the indefinite article a and an is with a noun complement. This is something new that you must be learning. You may have not learned about this in the earlier class. So be a little extra careful. With a noun complement, this includes names of professions. See, something new for you. He is an engineer. Now, what are we saying over here? The entire sentence, analyze the sentence. If I bifurcate the sentence into two parts, he is an engineer. I can separate the sentence into subject and predicate. The sentence has got two parts. He is the subject and the words is an engineer is a predicate. Now, if I concentrate on the predicate part where is is a verb and the rest of the two words an engineer which is helping the verb to complete its meaning he is if i just stop my sentence over here he is is my meaning clear no i have not been able to make my meaning clear so he is the subject is an engineer is the predicate part of the entire sentence where is is a verb and the other two words an engineer forms the complement of the sentence over here that's the complement you learned about complement in the earlier class, isn't it? A group of words which helps to complete the meaning of the sentence is called a complement or the other words in a sentence. So here you see the word an engineer contains two words. An an engineer. Now engineer is a name of a professional, isn't it? And what have we used just before it? The article an over there, the indefinite article an. Therefore, try to understand the rule given to us with a noun complement. So here an engineer is a noun complement. The word an engineer is satisfying or being used to describe the subject. That an engineer is who? The person he. So he is an engineer when an engineer is a complement in the sentence and it includes the name of a profession. Isn't it? It is including the name of a professional. Engineer is a professional. Near professional. Similarly, two more sentences. She is a good teacher. The words a good teacher is a complement in the sentence where the article indefinite article a has been used that is what we learned from the rule that where is the indefinite article a used along with the noun complement which includes the name of a profession so here also we have the profession dancer is a professional the word dancer is the name of a professional or a noun she is a teacher again teacher is a professional he became a great man you see, we have a compliment over here. He became a great man. Became is the verb. So along with the word became, we have the predicate part and we have the compliment, a great man. So all these examples show that the indefinite article a or an is used as a noun compliment. This includes the name of professional. Well, this was the third rule about the use of the indefinite article a and an. The fourth rule. We make use of the indefinite article a and an before certain numerical expressions, certain numbers. When we make use of numbers 
in writing our sentence or saying something we make use of the indefinite article a or an how let us see a dozen half a dozen a score score means count of 20 something that you count in 20 is called a score something that you have in 20 pieces with you say 20 marbles you have so you can say i have a score of marbles in my pocket or in my hand so you have 20 pieces of that therefore you are using the word score score is a numerical expression for 20 and see what have we used before it the indefinite article a you have to use it so a dozen dozen means 12 half a dozen means 6 a score 20 a gross something that is making up of 144 pieces 144 pieces of something together is called a gross i have a gross of these things so a gross here we have made use of the indefinite article a with these numerical expression few more we have a hundred so whenever you make use of the word hundred i have a hundred rupee note with me a hundred so simply you are not saying i have hundred rupee i have a hundred rupee note with me we are talking about that one note one single note so a hundred rupee note a thousand a million so these are all numerical expression numbers which make use of the indefinite article a or an before them well turning to the next page page number 2 the next rule we have is before so the use of the indefinite article a or an is done before what therefore the word before is given to you before before these expressions lot of great deal of great many of so i'm talking about phrases over here great deal of is a phrase great many of a phrase and lot of phrase but i can't just use it use it directly you can't use it just directly <clears throat> great deal of energy was lost in opening the tap can i say so no i must be saying a great deal of because i am using the phrase over here so whenever you make use of such phrases like great deal of great many of lot of you have to apply the indefinite article a before it depending upon what is utilized over here so a great deal of a great a many of and a great lot of that is the other rule that we need to remember well <clears throat> the next rule is in expressing in expression involving price speed ratio etc we well, we just understood about the use of the indefinite article a and an with numerical expression so similar one is given to you over here in expression involving means where price the price factor is used in the sentence or in the uh, usage of it speed ratio when such terminologies when terminologies or terms like price when you want to quote a price when you want to quote about or when you want to speak about the speed of something when you want to talk about the ratio or the proportion of something we make use of the indefinite article let us see in the example 5 rupees a kg so what am i saying something that is being sold for 5 rupees a kg if you ask a vendor or a seller Uh, how are you selling this you will say 5 rupees a kg for every kg a single kg so you see the term 5 rupees a price is being involved into it so when you want to involve a price factor a speed or when you want to involve ratio of something we make use of the indefinite article a 5 rupees a kg a 100 kilometers we will have to travel a 100 kilometers today so a 100 kilometers showing the distance of something so similarly we make use of the article a and an few more examples an hour he worked for an hour today he daily works for an hour so i have to use the article an before the word hour when i am showing some time expression over here five times a day you see i'm expressing time over here 40 rupees a meter a meter So I have to make use of article a before I write the word meter. I can't simply say forty rupees meter. No, that will be incorrect use or incorrect formation. So this is how we make use of the indefinite article a in expressions involving price, speed, ratio, etc., etc. Is about time factor, distance. It could be about such things. 
Well, the next rule we have with the word few and little. So I'm saying with the word few and little. So when we make use of the word few or little in our speech, in our writing, in the construction of our sentence, we make use of the article a and an. A few and a little mean a smaller number, a small amount, isn't it? When you say a few or a little, what do you mean? Do you mean to say large things, large amounts? No. We need to indicate, we mean to express the idea, something that is a little quantity in small amount. Therefore, a few and a little means a small number, a small amount. Have a look at the examples. We are going far away for a few days. So, what is being used over here? We are going far away for a few days. See, the usage over there, a few days. We are talking about days over here, but a few days. Not of days is plural. But what have we written before it? Few. Directly we cannot say we are going away for a days. No. For some days is okay. But then we are not using the article A over there. But when I am using the concept or using the word few over here, I am not sure about how many days am I going to go. So we are going far, we are going away for a few days. So when I am using the term few along with the plural noun days over there, it automatically indicates a singularity over there. A few days. And I have to use the term a few over here. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Acknowledge very well. A little. What term has been used over here? The word little. Little is indicating a small amount. So the word a little indicating a smaller amount, a few things, will be using the indefinite article a before it. So a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Well, these were two examples to use the word few and little. The next rule is about in exclamations before singular countable nouns. So when you use uh, singular countable nouns to express exclamations, to express a sudden strong feeling. We know about exclamation, isn't it? We learned in the kinds of sentences and sure we'll be learning about it this year as well. Well, so in exclamations before singular countable nouns. Have a look at the example. What a hot day. Can I simply say what hot day? No. That would be sounding weird, absurd, isn't it? I can't say what hot day. I will have to make use of the article a before it in order to indicate that it is that one single hot day. What a hot day. I'm talking about the day when I'm expressing my view that today is a hot day. So what a hot day. What a pretty doll. Such a nuisance. What a fine inning. So all these sentences a singular countable noun to express an exclamation using the exclamatory mark over there expressing a sudden strong feeling will definitely use the article a the indefinite article a before it as the requirement over here what a hot day what a pretty girl such a nuisance and what a fine innings so i hope this is clear to you a can be used before the words conferring respect or title that is mr mrs miss plus surname. So be very sure about this. The article A can be used before Mr, Mrs and the word Miss. Three words. But along with the surname. So whenever you talk about or whenever you use the word Mr, Mrs or Miss along with somebody's surname. If I say Mr Sharma, Mrs uh, Puna, uh, Miss uh, Dolly or any it could be any surname over here. So when I am using someone's surname along with the word Mr, Mrs or Miss, I will be able to use the article, the indefinite article A before it. But we have a condition for the. Let us see the example. How do we use it? A Mr. Smith, a Mrs. Smith and a Miss Smith. So you see Smith is the surname which is used along with the word Mr, Miss or Mrs. But we have a condition over here. When you are using this terminology or this usage and you are using the article A before it by saying a Mr. Smith, a Mrs. Smith or a Miss Smith. It means that you do not know the person. The person is 
strange for you you happen to meet someone on the street on the road whom you are meeting for the very first time maybe he is your relative or maybe he is completely unknown to you but you don't know the person at all he is a stranger for you or you had a telephonic talk with someone or someone called you for some purpose so you applied for something say you applied for a credit card and someone called you for a verification now you don't know the person so you can say who called you a mr smith called me for the purpose of verification so a mr smith means a man called mr smith and implies it is well understood that the speaker does not know him so when you are talking about someone you do not know at all and you are telling this to someone so you had a telephonic call as i just said and you are reciprocating the same in your family when you are asked for it who had called whose call was it you say a mr smith had called for verification purpose so you can see over here that a mr smith called because you don't know mr smith. otherwise if you know a person this cannot be used so remember that the use of mr mrs and miss plus the surname will be preceded by the article a when you do not know someone and the speaker is a stranger for you unknown for you it implies over here so remember this rule very well so this was the eight points that we learned about the use of the indefinite article now we have the next part given to us on page 2 is the indefinite article is not used we are going to understand where we where do we don't use where are we where we are not supposed to use the indefinite article first of all <coughs> we got three bulleted points over here so three rules over here that we are going to acknowledge with the uh, other examples over here let us see before uncountable nouns when it's very clear so far we had been learning about countable noun we had been advocating that we make use of the article a and an the indefinite article a and an only with countable nouns remember we never ever use it with uncountable noun on a general usual basis but sometimes we have exceptional cases let us see before uncountable nouns such as advice so we don't say a advice or an advice advice furniture information news baggage luggage honesty glass wood iron stone paper rice milk tea music money etc so all these are the words or all these are the uncountable terms with which we never use the indefinite article a or an well etc is given there will be many more added to this he gave me good advice now i can't say he gave me a good advice no i will not be using the word a or so he gave me good advice tables are made of a wood no i cannot say tables are made of a wood using the article a before the word wood is not appropriate it is a material it is an uncountable noun we very well know wood is a material noun we learned about the use of the article a and an in different article it is used to qualify a noun therefore we can say it plays the role of an adjective so here i cannot say he uh gave me a good advice or i used to say he gave me good advice similarly tables are made of a wood would be incorrect do you like milk in your tea can i say do you like a milk in your tea no i cannot be using the article a before the word milk it is a material noun okay a book is made of paper a well, book is a countable noun but a book is made of a paper no i cannot use the article indefinite article a for writing the word paper because paper is again a material and uncountable noun so we just acknowledge these examples giving us a proper idea about not to use the indefinite articles before uncountable nouns such as these that we just use in the sentence and in the example words given to us. so i hope the concept is very clear to you well these uncountable nouns are often preceded by the expression such as some a little a piece of a lot of etc when we just refer to this in the beginning of the page isn't this before a lot of a great deal of a great many of similarly we can use the article a when we are using it with these phrases then we will be able to use the article a have a look at the example 
these uncountable nouns are often preceded preceded means written before by expressions such as some a little a piece of a lot of as you see in the example he has a lot of money but i can't say he has a money no i cannot say he has a money with him but yes if i want to use the article a or the phrase that we just learned a lot of that is what i tried to explain in the beginning of this page he has a lot of money well money is an uncountable noun therefore i cannot directly say he has a money with him or he has a many money with him no he has a lot of money so i can apply i can uh, apply the phrase over here containing the article a with the uncountable noun because the sentence has an uncountable noun money the noun is uncountable the word money is uncountable but when i have preceded it with when i have written a phrase containing the article a then i will be able to use the article a over here he gave her a milk would be wrong he gave her some milk so you see the word some applied before the uncountable noun milk over here that is what we understood give me a piece of paper isn't it give me a paper in the give me a piece of paper he had a glass of milk so we not saying he he had a milk no incorrect he had a glass of milk. a glass of the phrase can be applied before the uncountable noun milk in order to make utilization of the article a before it but directly you can't say he had a milk it cannot be used the article a cannot be used directly along with the uncountable noun milk. so i hope the my i made my point clear to you well the next rule is before abstract nouns such as truth beauty happiness fear joy peace war and many more can be added to this all abstract noun that you can think about we don't make use of the article a or an before it the indefinite article a or an is not used before abstract nouns when making use of abstract noun in a sentence we do not apply the article a or an beauty is truth and i don't say a beauty is a truth no i am not applying the article a or an before any of these abstract noun both beauty and truth are abstract nouns another example i value your friendship greatly now friendship is again an abstract noun isn't it i value a friendship greatly no i cannot say so i value your friendship greatly your is showing possessiveness definitely but friendship which is an abstract noun cannot be preceded with the indefinite article a or an so i hope the point is very clear to you it's not a short one but a clear one before abstract nouns such as truth beauty happiness fear joy peace or war all are examples example words of abstract nouns and they are not preceded with the article a or an well the last one we have in the use in the topic about non usage of the article a and an before a common noun in the singular used in a general sense now this could be a little tricky one for you so try to understand it with proper attention before a common noun in the singular used in a general sense well have a look at the example first apple is good for health what is being said over here apple is good for health you may say so apple is a word beginning with the a so we can say an apple is good for health well you you should not be saying over here yes you can definitely say an apple is good for health but are you trying to say that one particular apple that you or i are having in our hand or with us is the only one used useful or good for health we don't mean to say that we are not making it particular or generalizing it as the apple but in a in the broader sense in the general sense we are saying that apple as a fruit is good for health therefore when you try to say something is a general sense as in this example apple is good for health you are just saying it as a generalized manner that when someone eats an apple or the habit of eating an apple is a healthy habit therefore apple is good for health is written without an article therefore before a common noun in the singular so it's a common noun it's a singular noun it's a countable noun 
use in a general sense so when you make use of the countable noun a singular countable noun in the general sense when you are not using it as a specialization or something but as a very general thing to say something or convey a message we don't use the article a or and before it similarly only god is immortal so what are we trying to say only god is immortal well we human beings are not immortal isn't it only god is immortal so can i write over here the article a or and no i will not be using the article a or and over because it is being said in the general way a generalized sense therefore we don't use the article a or and before it. this was the understanding about the not to be used articles not to be used indefinite articles rules well well it's now time for homework so note down the homework i will give you a few sentences where you may have to use the article a or an as and when required so note down this rewrite using a or an whenever required for sentence
these are eight sentences that you need to rewrite by using a or and wherever required. So you may find a sentence where it is not required. So don't write it. So wherever you feel that you need to require, need to add the article in the appropriate places, rewrite it by using a and and. And make use of capitalizations whenever required, as and when required, and the other necessary changes. So this was the homework for the indefinite articles that we learned today. In the upcoming uh, lecture, we will continue with our chapter and the understanding of this topic. Till then, take care. Have a nice day and goodbye.